Hey, how you doing? My name is Randy. I'm a member here at Ninth and O, and I get the pleasure this Good Friday to share with you this devotional as we look at Mark verses chapter 15, verses 1 through 39. This is just an awesome time that we've had in Mark, and in this great Good Friday morning, we get to look at uh, the effect of a God who died well. That's what I would say. And so we're going to start at the, at the very end and see on verse 39, and it reads, And when the centurion was standing right in front of him, saw the way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. And just imagine uh, a man who is the centurion of a, not a God-fearing man uh, in charge of hundreds of people who've seen plenty of crucifixions. But now just the way that Jesus handled himself came to the conclusion that seemed to elude so many religious leaders of that day that Jesus Christ was indeed the Son of God. And so we go back up and we look and see how Jesus carried himself in such a way to live, a, to live and to die that the, at the end of the death, a guy says, hey, that must be the Son of God. First, at the beginning, we start off with this illegal trial that the Jewish leaders had, and they brung Jesus to Pilate, and Pilate asked him the simple question of, are you the king of the Jews? And he says, is as you say. And then so now the Jewish leaders pile on accusation after accusation, and we see something amazing. We see Pilate's interaction, and there's some realizations that Pilate has comes on. And he says he was amazed at Jesus because he didn't answer them. And so that's one takeaway, a bunch of takeaways we're going to get from this, but that's one takeaway I want you to put it on is that uh, Jesus did not feel compelled to answer those who wrongly accused him. And that's just something we as Christians can take away um, as we go through this turmoil, this time where it's just harder and harder to live a life honoring to God without being uh, lied upon or subjected to being uh, bigoted or evil or antiquated and the truth of the matter is we don't have to answer everything uh, God is strong enough to fight for himself uh, God is confident in who he is and what he has done and so Pilate is amazed at Jesus restraint but at the same time uh, Pilate doesn't seem to be as convicted um, as he needs to be because it goes on to say that after the chief priest had stirred up the crowd to ask for the crucifixion of Jesus, Pilate even asked, you know, well, what do I do with Jesus? Because he recognized Jesus to be innocent. And he says, what evil has he done in verse 14? But they yet and still side crucified him. And knowing Pilate amazed at Jesus' restraint, recognized him to be an innocent man, it still read, wishing to satisfy the crowd. Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. And they go another note that we see, Pilate recognizes who Jesus is, recognizes he's an innocent man and that the people who brung him actually acted out of envy as opposed to righteousness. But instead of standing up for what is right, he chose the easy route of satisfying those who uh, make it hard for him. And so uh, we see that this, con this change, this conflict between this Roman centurion who once he encountered Jesus recognized who he was and this leader of Pilate who capitulated to the evil cause of the day to do that which is ungodly to be done and to punish an innocent man. But even after that, we see that the cohorts and when they took after they didn't scourge Jesus, which was not a light thing, but I only got a few minutes, so I can't get into that, uh, and beat him mercilessly, they began to mock him. These are probably cohorts who are up under this centurion's, uh, who realized who Jesus was. They probably worked upon him. He was over 100 men. And these are guys sitting here clothing him in purple and mocking him for being the king of the Jews. And then even after mocking him, they go forth and they march him up the hill for crucifixion. And Jesus is so uh, 
so honorable. Instead of taking the the myrrh, which probably would have deadened some of the pain, it wouldn't have totally took it away. He refused. And most likely this made an impression upon the centurion as he took up on there. And the Bible lets us know that he did not uh, say a mumbling word, but he was bold in his proclamations. And even in the midst of his uh, sacrifice, when he's being mocked by not only uh, the religious leaders of that day, but passerbyers and even the ones crucified with him uh, to fulfill the scriptures. Jesus, I like to say, gives them a sermon. He says, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken thee? And this is a sermon that any good uh, Jew would have recognized was the beginning lines of Psalms 22. And in, and in Psalms 22, it starts off, my God, my God, why have they forsaken me? And it's acting out in front of their very eyes. It says, yet you are holy and you are enthroned upon the praises of Israel in verse three. In verse seven, it says, all who see me sneer at me. They separate with their lips and they wag their heads saying, commit yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver you. Let him rescue him because he delighted in him. And so we see in verse 14, Jesus says, I am poured out as we see Jesus. It says, I am poured out like water. 15, my strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue cleaves to my job. 17, I can count all my bones. They look and they stare at me. They divide my garments among them and for my clothing they cast lots. We see verse 22 played out in front of our eyes. And yet at the end, Jesus yells with a loud voice and gives up the ghost. And, and the curtain is torn from top to the bottom. And this pagan centurion looks at all that just occurred in front of his face. The Christ who yelled out, my God, my God, why have that forsaken you? The Christ who in a powerful, not in a whimpering, yelled out and gave up the ghost. And he realized that surely this is the Son of God. So I ask you, I pray that you are like this centurion who sees the power of Christ, sees the love of Christ, sees the kindness of Christ, and recognize for what it is, and see who Christ, who he is, by who he, not only who he claimed to be, but who he proved to be. So as we celebrate this Good Friday, uh, this day where God we so loved condescended down, took on the full wrath of God for our sins, and lovingly died for us. We can be like the centurion and say, surely he is the son of God. I hope you have a good day.